Hi there, my friend and friends. Flexbox is amazing, but as the name implies for grid-like layouts like this one that I have right here, grid is often best, but there's a problem sometimes with these grids because uh, I'm using the grid auto fit syntax right now, which will create new columns for me as I'm going. But you know, you get these one elements or these two elements left over here at the bottom. And sometimes you'd prefer things to be centered or the layout to be a little bit different than what I'm getting in this situation. And it sometimes it makes you wonder a little bit about like what the best thing could be and maybe Flexbox would actually be better because Flexbox sort of allows for that type of thing much easier, but there's limitations to the Flexbox solution that you can actually solve with Grid. But I just want to show you what these limitations are with Flexbox because it might be what you want in the first place. Uh, and so what we're going to do is these are Flexbox. I just put the um, a white dotted border around it so we can see what's happening. I have a Flexi Grid and then I just have a bunch of them with different amounts of items in there. And we're just putting a display flex on the parent. So we, that, that's flexing, that's nothing too fancy. Uh, and then the important thing with Flexbox, if you want these types of sort of grid-ish layouts, is you do wanna use a flex wrap with them as well. And with the flex wrap on there, you can see things have started wrapping a little bit and you get this type of layout. And if this is what you want with the bottom element stretching, then Flexbox is what you're after, right? Or even here where like you don't mind that these two columns are different sizes uh, compared to the three on top or you know this type of irregular column type thing, this could be exactly what you want. And you could even harness this a little bit. Like I could come in here and I'm doing a flex basis of 100% minus three divided by three, uh, which is kind of specific, but it's because I'm after three columns right now as sort of the baseline and this sort of gets me there. <laughs> so it's 100% minus three. Uh, actually, this should be minus two now that I think about it. The flex is uh, helping me with that, but that's just the minus two is for the gaps down the middle. And just so you know, if, if I didn't do that, I'd only end up with two columns. So you have to come in. So it's 100% minus two for the columns and then how many columns you want. Um, and then if you wanted to, you could put like a min width on there, right? Uh, and a max width on there to try and harness them a little bit more. And then you sort of get this weird thing. All right, let's just do it without the max width, actually. We'll do it just with the min width. And with the min width, it doesn't really change much, I don't think, actually. <laughs> so with the max width on there, what we can do is it, it's going to do this and the min width is just going to force um, wrapping to happen at smaller sizes. So we get this type of layout. So as it gets smaller, you can see that, you know, we get two columns and then one column eventually. And this is sort of the type of thing I want. I like intrinsic layouts where I'm not too worried about when this is happening. Like when is it going from three to two to one column? That that this is fine. What I have going on right now is, is great, but I want it here, like when this happens, I want it to take up that full width, but then what do I put as my max width? Because if I take off my max width, they'll stretch, but then this bottom one is stretching the whole width and you end up in this really weird situation where it can be really hard to know exactly um, what to put. And especially because you could probably figure out something based on the flex basis that I have here to actually make it work. Um, we might even be able to use the same one here and here. Uh, now that I think about it and yeah, so they're going to sort of match each other, but we still run into that problem, uh, in certain situations, right? Especially like here, it's working really well, but then when we get to this smaller size right here, like that's kind of weird. I want it to grow more, but it's only two columns now. And I don't know when that switch is happening. So building a media query around that becomes difficult. And then maybe in some places I want it, some places I don't, I don't know. Anyway, that's a really long introduction to some of the limitations you can run into Flexbox depending on the style of layout that you're after. And this is very important. Flexbox might be the perfect solution for what you want if you don't mind those irregular rows and columns. But inspired by this uh, article by Ryan Mulligan, if you don't know Ryan's blog, this is linked in the description, definitely give it a follow. Um, but he looks at building pyramids with grid and uh, you know you can see all these different ones. And I love this idea. I thought this was super cool. And I started playing with it a lot. I went down a really deep rabbit hole for a long time, trying to get something to work because the one limitation he came up with here is uh, you're sort of hard coding these values in. And you can it, it's good because you can just sort of change the, the set here. And eventually with style queries, this would, this would be even better, right? Because you could just choose this and everything within there would sort of get styled the way you need it to. Um, but there's like, I really like this idea, but as he mentions in the limitations here, each layout variation expects a specific odd number of child elements to be rendered. And he tried looking at ways of automatically doing it, but there's just too many edge cases. And I agree with him. If you want that pyramid layout, I tried to come up with thing. You can even see he mentioned me down here because I showed, I came up with my own solution for doing it and shared it with him. And so uh, he linked to my solution as well. And as you can see here, um, I, I mentioned that on September 5th and I really, I played with this a lot. Uh, 
and I was after something specific that I couldn't get to work. And then just today, which is maybe a couple of weeks ago, because uh, I record stuff in advance, but I <laughs> we're what we're I'm October 21st now. So it was over a month and a half later. Uh, I came across the code pen that I'd created last time I was going through stuff and I ended up finding a way to do it. And sorry about the super long intro. This is like the worst thing you can do for YouTube, but I really felt like I needed to give some backstory to all of this. Um, just so I'm glad you stuck around. And so, uh, yeah, so the backstory of Ryan's post, but also just the limitations of Flexbox and why I was sort of intrigued by what Ryan was doing. And that idea was really gnawing at me. And so one of the things that I set up here, and this is using the has to count the children and then target specific children, uh, where you can sort of start setting things up in specific ways. And this version, which will also be linked in the description, is kind of neat in that it's always going to center them like this. But I, I made this and I'm like, wait, I can just do this exact same thing with Flexbox. Uh, there's nothing different here because I'm not like setting a breakpoint. It's just squishy. And so I could do this exact same thing with Flexbox. And I was like, oh, I just wasted a bunch of time <laughs> doing this. Uh, and you could invert it and make it more like the pyramid, which would be harder, I think, to do with Flexbox than it would with Grid. But it wasn't really what I wanted to do. What I really wanted to do was to take this type of thing where I'm using the auto fit layout with Grid and be able to achieve this. And so once again, we go back to that where they're they're squishing and stacking and doing their own thing and figuring out how many columns it needs. And I wanted to do this with the idea of Ryan's thing where we're centering the children and we can do that. So how do we do it? It's kind of weird, I won't lie, but it, it's a lot of stuff that we can learn along the way in actually building this out as well. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to explore it. And so what we're going to do is let's come here and we're going to, I'm going to do this with nesting just because it makes life easier. You don't have to use nesting, but it would just create a lot more selectors along the way. So I'm going to do it with nesting where I'm going to come in here uh, and first I'm going to make this into a container. It works a lot better if you are using a container. So I'm going to do container type is inline size like that. Uh, just because if you're doing it with a media query and you have like if your container doesn't touch the edges of the screen, the numbers and everything we're going to do here don't work. It is um, yeah, anyway, you'll see. <laughs> so we wanted to find a container on the grid. Just a really fast interruption before we keep going with this video. After I finished recording it, I was made aware that there's a bug in one of the browsers that what we have right now can actually cause the layout to break and fall apart. I'm gonna talk more about that at the end of the video, including showing a fix for it. But if you're using Safari and you're following along with me right now, you might see some really weird behaviors happening. So just for now, if you're following along, use another browser, and then at the end, I'll show a fix that works in every single browser. So yeah, let's jump right back into it. And then this is something else I've been playing with a lot is bringing in calculations based on the size of a container to do things. So we'll start with the simplest one where I'm going to say if the container has a width that is greater than or equal to, and this is code pen um, doing it's the greater than and equal to, but if I put them together, it's making a glyph there. So it looks a little bit weird, but greater if the width is greater than or equal to, and then we can do a calc here, which is super cool. Uh, thank you, Miriam, for, for sharing that. Uh, I've done a video specifically on this. If you want to learn more, I'll put a card up top. Uh, and I'm going to do this size, except that should all be within my calc like that. We're going to, let's say we're going to choose dot item and let's just say grid. Uh, let's just change the background color. Background is going to go to Dodger blue. And so now you can see when we're smaller, we're there we go. <laughs> and then when we get bigger, it's jumping up to this blue. And the reason it's going to blue at this specific size is this is when we're crossing over from being uh, from being 100 or sorry, from being one column to two columns, because we're doing 100 pixels times two, which means there's enough room for the grid auto fit to make two columns. We are adding this plus one because it happens when we have a gap down the middle. Eventually we're going to be able to do this type of math with variables for the time being, we can't. So we do have to come in with numbers like this, which sucks because then if you change your gap, you have to go through and change everything or if you change your min max you'd have to go through and change them not the end of the world uh if you're actually going to put this into production or use it even on a personal site i would probably put a comment here so when grid auto fit equals two columns we want to do something now we don't actually want to change the background to dodger blue and the trick for getting this to work goes back to what ryan did where uh if we look all the way at the top where was it uh to be able to center things basically you need your 
uh, elements to span two columns. As long as they're always spanning two columns, then it becomes possible because you have leftover columns to be able to play around with. So the first trick in getting this to work is saying, we'll keep the Dodger blue one there just as a, a visual for us. Um, or maybe, yeah, let's leave. Uh, let, maybe we'll do our border color, border color on the item, just so it's less. There we go. So it goes from pink to blue. We can see that switching. I just like the color combo better this way. I don't know. Um, and what we want to do is actually do a, a grid column of span two. And this is really important because we need it to stay looking like it's stacked that way. But you can see as soon as we go up to two columns now where our border color is just changed. So we can see the border color and I'm actually going to change my border to uh, let's do, where's my border? We'll make this dotted because I know colors are a really bad way. Some people have color blindness and stuff. We'll make it white now. Um, white. There we go. Just because uh, it can be hard to distinguish colors. <laughs> so uh, I think hopefully that's obvious enough that it's it's getting brighter um, and turning off. So we have that switching. So it turns on right here. And that means we're up to two columns, but we're spanning two columns. So it looks the same as it did before. This isn't too fancy, but it's just a really important thing that we're always, our grid column is always spanning two columns. We just have to remember that all the time. Uh, and I'm actually gonna do, can we do a grid column and span two? Cause this wasn't planned, but I think it's gonna work. Okay, it looks like it's gonna work. Now, when we get up to three columns, we want this to change. But remember when we get to three columns, this isn't actually going to be happening at three columns. This is happening at six columns, right? So if let's do an inspect on here so we can actually see this and we'll make it a bit bigger. So when I get to here and it looks like it's, uh, sorry, I said six, it's actually four columns when we get to this. So if I turn on this grid here, uh, which is kind of hard to see, it's easier maybe, let's change the color of it. If I go to my layout here, we can go and change the color of this grid to something that just stands out a bit more, hopefully. There we go. Uh, so you can see we're up to four and that's because remember we've done our span two. So because we've done our span two, we're always going to be working now in, in double of what it visually looks like. So just keep that in mind as we're going and I'll leave this grid inspector on um, as we're doing this. Plus it, my face won't cover the content that way. <laughs> um, so I'll leave that on for the moment. And so that means, yeah, so when we see two columns, we actually have four. When we see three columns, we actually have six and so on and so forth as it gets bigger. So when we get to this stage, we can do something that's kind of fun. So I'm gonna take this container query again and this time it's when we're at four columns. So I just put four. This is always going to be my column count. And then here is always the number of, of gaps that we have. So when we're at this stage, we actually still only have one gap. So we can leave it just like that. That's perfectly fine. Uh, and I'm going to say, I think we want width is greater than and not greater than equal to. It might not matter at this stage, actually. So I'm going to do when the width is greater than this. Uh, let's change this to be solid. Uh, border color, let's just say border is uh, solid five pixels and we'll do uh, green. Just so we can see, we go from, you know, we can see the, the very clearly when we cross over. And I guess here, just because I can see that weird switch happening right here way too early, we are going to say, oh, ha, huh, this is going to be three. I was thinking it wouldn't be, but you can see the we do have the three gaps to account for. I thought that was right. Okay. So now, yeah, you can actually see that switch and we do want greater than and equal to. <laughs> so we should be able to see that switch is happening exactly when we go to there. So we have one, two, three columns. We just happen to be spanning um, some of those gaps. So four columns, three gaps is when that will happen. And I'm actually going to change this now. So instead of being that, we're going to say if the item is, let's just say last child, first of all, because we're going to be using this a lot. So now you can see only the last child in all of them is getting selected. And we want to say if the last child, which is the one that has the different border on it, if that last child also happens to be an nth child of odd. And if it is there, so now the odd one you can see has changed there. This one hasn't. This one has, this one hasn't, this one has. And then our grid column, instead of doing a span two on that, we're gonna say that it's a grid column start of, is it three or two that I want? I don't remember. Uh, we want that to be a two. And now it's centered. So anytime that it's an odd number, it's always gonna be centered right there. Perfect.
So that's a nice start to this whole thing. Uh, but now it gets a little bit trickier because when we get to this point, you can see that we've, we've broken things. Because we're breaking things at this stage, the easiest thing to do is make these very specific breakpoints so there's no overlap, because if not, you're just fighting over old styles that you have. Luckily, the range syntax, which I'm using right now, uh, makes that a little bit easier to do. But I'm actually gonna move this from this side to this side, just because visually it makes it easier to read, in my opinion. So I'm gonna say is less than and equal to, and then we'll just do a greater than on this side. So I'm gonna say, if we have the calc of 100, whatever, we have our, if we have our four columns, I'm not gonna read the calc out every time. If we if our width is less than, uh, and I wanna switch this, whoops, I wanted this way, there we go. Um, so we're gonna, I'm gonna do, if the width is greater than, because we're sort of reading backwards, or if this size is less than the width, we want this style to apply. But then over on this side, we, we sort of wanna squish the width between two values, and I'm just gonna take this one on this side, drop it off on this side. And we're going to say that if the width is then, and we're always going up by two, so this will be a six and a five. And let's just, instead of changing that, let's just say the background uh, color is going to be transparent. We're just gonna turn off the background color of our items. Transpar transparent, there we go. This should also be that way. <laughs> That's what I did wrong. Uh, we're, there we go. So when we hit that specific point, we're going to uh, we're we're getting to it being transparent there. Now, obviously, that's not what we actually want to do at that stage. So I'm going to come back with the the style that we had uh, a second ago. And so when we're in that very specific space where our grid has between four and six columns, so basically when it's four columns, we're going to center. Um, everything. So actually we'll go back to here and we can see that we're centered once again. Cool. And then when we get larger than that, we're turning that style off. So once we get up to our six columns, which visually looks like three columns, then we turn that style back off. So this style's only living. So here we can say when grid auto fit equals uh, four columns, which maybe is a bit weird because we only visually see two. Uh, so we can just say when visually we have two columns, we wanna do this. Now, what happens when we visually have three columns? So the easiest thing to do is to copy what we have here and to paste it and just update our numbers. So here, let's take this back just to item. And on that item here, we're gonna do our background of transparent again, transparent. And this time it's between six columns. And if we change that number, we have to change this. And I know it's magic number and it's kind of annoying. And we'll go up to eight and I'm gonna make this one seven. It's a little bit annoying, but it's one of those things that you set it up and then it just works forever. So it's, you know, it sucks, but um, at least it, we have a solution. <laughs> so then when we get to the six columns, our backgrounds are now turning off and we, everything's back default styled uh, at this stage. So instead of doing this now, this is where things get a bit more interesting because we have two different scenarios. We have sometimes where we have one item by itself and sometimes where we have two items by itself. For the one item by itself, I'm just gonna copy and paste some existing code that I have, because uh, this one's less interesting <laughs> right here. Uh, actually, we can just do this as a grid column start of three. And you can see what that's doing. It's a saying that if I'm doing the same thing as before, uh, but actually there's one difference here. I'm taking all my odd elements. In this case, uh, and even we'll do the background transparent again, just so we see it, transparent. I think this is the easiest way to see the ones that it's selecting. Uh, I'm saying, every third item starting at the fourth. So we're gonna go one, two, three, no, one, two, three, we're okay, one, two, three, four. I'm getting the fourth one, but I'm looking, is it the last child? No, then we no, no, and then one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So uh, yeah, one, yeah, every third one starting at the fourth, I apologize. So from here we go one, two, three, is this the last child? It is, we're gonna select it and change what it looks like. Then the same thing's going to apply in this one. We go to the fourth item, then we count three, fourth item, whatever, it just works. <laughs> and then, so this one's working. Anytime it's alone, we're just centering it with this. Where things from here get a little bit different is in this situation, I don't wanna select the item itself. I wanna select the preceding sibling. And this used to be impossible to do with CSS, but now we can do it thanks to the has selector. So inside this container query, but not 
and uh, if we look here, like I've selected my grid and we're nesting inside of that grid. And this is where I said nesting can, can help out. So inside of this container query, I'm going to do an ampersand has, and the ampersand is a placeholder for the original selector here. So this is the same as doing, you know, grid has. So if my grid has, and in this case, we want to see if a fifth, instead of a fourth child, we want to see if a fifth child is the last child. So we can use the, the same pattern here where we can just come in and we don't really need the item, but we might as well keep it because but you could just do this uh, for these nth child 3n and we can say plus five is the last child. And if it is, then we could select anything we want here. So for now, let's just select that item and uh, last child and we'll do a direct sibling selector on that. And don't worry, we're gonna change this in a second, but let's just do the background transparent again. I should have copied this so I could just paste it transparent. <laughs> uh, so this one here will change to transparent. And then if I look up higher, we should have one more. That one there is changing to transparent, which is awesome. But now how do we select this one here? Well, we have the, this is selecting the parent and then we're selecting an element that where the parent is, this, this is true, right? So we can actually use an nth last child to count backwards and say two. And we're gonna select this one instead. This is so cool. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we're selecting it where this, the, the last child meets that certain criteria and then we're counting back by one every single time. And then we can come in here with our grid column start and make that one a two, I believe. And it's gonna shove that over. And so now with that, every situation that we run into, it's always going to be centered right there. And then as we get bigger, the same thing's gonna happen. Uh, and we can just come in with yet another one. Uh, I'll do this one quickly. So let's just uh, copy this entire one, paste this one down. I'm not gonna explain it as much, but when we visually have three columns, we went between six and eight. So now we're gonna do between eight, which means this has to be a seven and 10. And then if that's 10, this has to be a nine. And once again, I'm just gonna delete these because this is gonna completely change. And in this situation, we actually have a few different things uh, that we're running into just because we have, uh, yeah, we're just, we have more columns. So there's more potential situations. Sometimes there's one by itself, sometimes there's two by itself, and sometimes there's three by itself. And we need to take all of those into account. All right, a little update after the fact of recording the last one, uh, I shared a little bit of what I was doing on Mastodon and we had a reply showing that it breaks things in Safari. And this is actually really weird, right? I was really confused when I saw this about what was going on. Like I couldn't wrap my mind really around what was happening. And I actually ended up playing around with it uh, quite a bit. And what it turns out to be, uh, if we find our, our grid here, uh, we, there's a solution, don't worry, if you are using Safari, you want it to work across all browsers, it will work. Um, but when I did my grid inspector, I found the grid and I was confused by a couple of things because first of all, it clearly is making the column zero pixels in width, which is kind of weird. Uh, but then it's also creating seven columns. And I was like, wait, why is it creating seven columns? I don't quite get it. Uh, so <laughs> what it's actually doing is here's a version with auto fit and then down here's uh, the auto fill version. And what it seems to be doing is miscalculating the size to be zero for I don't know why, <laughs> but it's also creating the number of columns you would get if you were using auto fill instead. So like if I shrink this down and we get like more columns coming now, so we're up, up to 10 right here, you can actually see it's up to 10 over here. And this is really annoying, <laughs> but luckily the fix for it is actually super, super easy. So uh, here is the fix and I'll put a link to this version um, down in the description as well. But all I'm doing, actually I don't need to show you that, all I'm doing here uh, is I have a grid container and then the grid inside. So I'm just wrapping the container on the outside that had all of the sizing rules I had for the container and then my grid inside of that. So uh, nothing too complicated, um, but yeah, I had the max width that I had on the container, I'm putting it here instead. Uh, so you just need sort of that extra layer and then everything works without any issues uh, in Safari. So yeah, one of those strange bugs that just shows that you need to test across all browsers. I have filed a bug report with WebKit. And so I put a link to the bug report in the description along with the original version that I shared and this version that we see right here that works in all browsers. So yeah, sorry about that. But yeah, a fun little exploration there on when things unexpectedly go wrong with newer features that are happening in CSS. And if you are watching this in the future and you're just trying to make up your mind on 
which one to use. I would test in all browsers, whichever version you want to be using just to be safe. Uh, but also this is in version 18.0 of Safari that is currently not working. So if that helps you decide uh, which one you want to do, depending on how far back you want browser support and stuff, the this version might be the safer one for at least the intermediate term. But it depends when you're watching this and how far back you want your browser support to be. And just like that, and this is a little bit different because I could do it with my grid column start and we don't need this right there. Uh, so let's just update these really fast. And so there we go. We've set that up and now we run into this situation. It's probably something that's very niche that you're probably not gonna use too often, but I was just so happy to solve this problem. I had to make a video around it that was way longer than it needed to be. Hopefully just other people that are CSS nerds like me are enjoying this and, and think it's kind of cool and everyone else already left. <laughs> um, and if you're watching this going, well, I would have done this instead with Flexbox and I could do the exact same thing. That's awesome. Uh, I still think this is cool that we can do this and there's probably other use cases and other things that you can think of of counting in this way to be able to accomplish what you need at specific breakpoints the way we're doing here. Uh, and again, this you could set these calcs up with a media query as well, but it wouldn't work quite in the same way. Uh, just because unless your container is the full width and then it's fine. But as soon as your container would be smaller, your numbers would just go out of whack. So we really do need containers here uh, to be able to pull this off. A big thank you to Ryan for inspiring me to go down all of this. And yeah, thank you for watching and nerding out a little bit with me. And if you think of any other use cases or cool things, around this idea that you think you could use it for, leave a comment in the description to let me know. If you could build this exact same thing with Flexbox and I wasted my time, you can let me know uh, in the description down below as well. But I'm, hopefully if you watched all of this, you've thought of some other use cases if that's the case. And if you haven't really seen much use of has before and you wanna see some other really awesome stuff that you can do with it, there is a video that is right here for your viewing pleasure that you might really enjoy where I look at a whole bunch of different things that you can do with it. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome, Andrew, Philip, Simon, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons and channel members for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.